Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. In this video I will show a method to tame a volcano and create a decent amount of power from it. So I have a volcano, currently it is idle, it is in this nuclear fallout room. I use nuclear fallout because it has a decent uh, conductivity of 1, which is a lot better than hydrogen. Hydrogen just has a conductivity of 0.16 so this is because we want to transfer heat from this igneous ro uh, rock into the gas and finally to the bottom of this build. At the bottom of this build I've set up a few metal tiles for heat transfer as well. Uh, the tiles on the right are from steel that is because we need uh, a very high melting point because the volcano is erupting at I think uh, 1200 1700 degrees Celsius, so we need a metal that has a higher melting point than that. So, whenever the volcano is erupting, uh, the hot magma falls down here into this room, and there's some heat transfer going on to the left. The left tiles are from cobalt because uh, cobalt has a better uh, conductivity than steel. Um, and then on the left hand side, we have a different room out of steam. and we are feeding the steam into four uh, steam turbines and they will convert the steam into uh, electrical energy because we want to we because we want the steam turbines to work at uh, maximum efficiency we need to make sure that the steam in this room is around 200 degrees celsius and there's uh, a bit of automation required to actually achieve that um, we are measuring the temperature with this thermal sensor up here, just below the turbines, and say whenever we have uh, 200 degrees or above detected, please close these two mechanized airlocks. And whenever these mechanized airlocks are closed, there is heat transfer going on between the right and the left side. As you can see, the right hand side is dropping by a bit and the left hand side is yeah, rising by a bit. Just for simulation reason, I'm uh, gonna switch this to the other option. So in this situation where the mechanized airlock uh, is open, there's no heat transfer going on between uh, left and right side. As you can see, left side dropping, right side uh, increasing in temperature. And that is because in this situation we have a vacuum in here, so no heat transfer. That back again. Uh, fun fact by the way, you don't need power to run your mechanized airlocks, they will just open and close a bit slower uh, when they are not connected to power. So, also a few more details in this room. Um, we need a lot of heat transfer happening because steam has a very bad thermal conductivity of just 0.18, as you can see here which w would result in uh, the temperature not evenly spread into this room. So we have a bottom layer of nuclear waste. Um, this is just a few kilograms. As you can see, this liquid provides a decent thermal conductivity of 6. And also we've got temper uh, temp shift plates set up. You don't need to have them from diamond. Uh, you can use any metal that has a good conductivity. To achieve that. So this way we make sure that the temperature in this room is more evenly spread because otherwise the thermal sensor would probably detect um, the, the temperature very soon while on the left hand side probably the steam would be just around 150 degrees or so. Uh, so we want an evenly spread temperature. Also one more detail is that uh, we are pumping the uh, exhaust water from the steam turbines which is at 95 degrees, I think, yeah. We are pumping that right next to the uh, mechanized airlock. That is because we want the highest heat transfer to happen here. What actually is happening, the, the water is immediately, immediately uh, heated up to above 100 degrees Celsius and therefore evaporate back into the system. So we have a lot of heat transfer with this uh, setup as well. So I think this is pretty much it for this video. Um, yeah, if you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, thanks and goodbye.